Today we're going to be having a quick look at using Planning Analytics Workspace as our primary modeling and development interface. Now this is something where since Workspace has been introduced and we have been able to use it for development, it has always felt like it's perhaps a little bit of an afterthought, primarily due to the fact that our modeling has been done within books that are pretty much identical, if not exactly identical, to the books that we use for reporting and planning purposes. Now, as of release 64, this is all changing. So IBM have now officially introduced a currently beta product where we can now do our development in a new screen and a new interface. And to get to that, currently there's no link available from within Workspace. We have been promised that in release 65 that is likely to be available for local installation in July. Uh, there will be a link there, but currently we don't have a link and we have to actually type something into the URL to get to it. So to do that, what you'll notice anyway is when you're moving around in Workspace, your URL actually changes a little bit. So it will always start with the URL that you use to get into the application, and then it will be followed by perspective equals something. That something being the thing that you are working on at the time. And it is that something that we want to change here. So we just want to type in modeling. And to my British compatriots, that is the American spelling of modeling. So it does only contain one L, which is something to be a little bit wary of, just in case you can't get in. But when we do that, it takes us to what we're now referring to as workbenches. And what we see is the actual interface will not change too much. So I will start off by saying this has been officially released as a beta product in version 64. But if you are still on one of the slightly older versions, so it's definitely available as far back as 61, maybe even 60. I can't quite remember that, but give it a try and see if you can get in. And from what I've seen, 63 and 64 are pretty much identical. Uh, 62, 61, I think some of the layout was slightly different with some of what we're now seeing in the left-hand pane, I think was in the top right section. But what we see in here now, up the top, we have modeling tools section. And in here, we can save our workbenches or create a new workbench. And when you do save your workbenches, if you want to access those, when you come into this modeling interface, if you go to the home section and go to your shared folders or personal folders, wherever you may have saved it, you will be able to open your workbenches from within there. So you can come back to what you're working on. But also in this modeling tools section, we have our objects. So this is the quick way for us to create a new process, chore, cube, or dimension. But if we go down to the bottom section, we have our databases. And this is the more traditional that we have been used to in the previous releases of Workspace. So in here, we can come in and bring across some of the objects that we already have in existence. And if we right click and edit, we'll see by default, they become available to us on a full screen perspective. And we have uh, the name of the object in our tab, also with the icon to tell us what it is. So we can open up multiple ones of these objects and click between them in our tabs. And the fact that it's full screen seems very simple, but it's something that we like because we're using all of our real state if we want to. But what we used to have, of course, when we were working in books, which most of us didn't like, one of the actually good things about it was that you could have two processes side by side. Now, to do that, we have to work a little bit differently because it's not books. So instead of clicking edit when you are coming in here, what you can actually do is just drag something in and then you'll see you have the option to put it on the left, right, sort of top, bottom of your screen so you can move it around a bit. And if I pull it over to the right here, now we can start having objects side by side. And that's particularly useful for, for example, if we want a, a cube view that we're trying to populate and we want the process that we are using to do it. So we can see that at the same time. And particularly for those of us as developers, we tend to work on multiple monitors. Now, this is still about working on a single monitor at a time. But the best feature that is available within here is in the top right, we will notice we have this 
uh, take it out to a floating tab option, which is a completely new thing. So when I click that, the object that we've been working on actually comes out into a floating tab that we can work with. And this allows us to move it over to our second monitor. And this is far superior to what we have had so far. And I hope that this feature actually makes it into the main planning analytics workspace interface for the reporting and planning purposes as well, because as hugely beneficial as this is to us as developers, I think it's going to be even more beneficial to our end users. Just think about the ability for a user to take a cube view out to their second monitor and keep that as a reference point while they are doing their planning and whatever else they might be doing in their main monitor. But what we do have here is, of course, this is a beta release. So what IBM are doing here is they have got so far in the development of this product that they are happy enough with it that they want you to use it and to test it and to give them feedback. Now, it's not completely ready yet, so there are going to be some problems with it. So the feedback that they want is what can they do to make it better and what in there currently doesn't work. Now, I've been using this for the last couple of months now, thanks to one of the IBM development team posting on LinkedIn some little Easter egg teasers about how to get into this. Uh, but in that month, the only problem I've really found is when we are working in these floating screens, if I scroll to the very bottom of a TI process, and right now I'm scrolled down as far as I can go, it won't scroll any further, you will notice my last line is sort of cut off halfway. And there seems to be nothing I can do about that in terms of just scrolling. And this happens on all TI processes, and I've seen it in Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. And I've also seen it when I'm working on different browser resolutions. But I can click into here and use my down arrow keys to get to the bottom of the screen. But when I do that, it actually removes the top section that includes my ability to return this tab to the workbench. Now I can get that back by pressing F11 to go full screen and F11 again to come out of full screen. And then I can take it back to the workbench. But that's just one of those sort of uh, slightly janky things that you may find in a beta release. But they are exactly the sort of things that the IBM team are looking for feedback on. So what we have now is a development interface that allows us to do everything we could previously. It just allows us to do it in a slightly nicer way where we can really use all of our real estate and make the most of our time as developers. Now, I like this. I previously already liked doing development in Workspace, so I think this is a pretty good move they are making. Um, and I recommend everyone, if you're still doing your development in Architect, I know originally that Workspace didn't quite have all of the features that Architect had, um, now it is really, really getting there, and it does the basics far better. So the things such as just having color coding in the TI editor or the control and space button to give us the auto completion of what we are working on, uh, it's just a much better way to do the standard day-to-day -day jobs. There are still a little couple of things outstanding that we would like to see improved, such as when you're reordering the uh, dimensions of a cube, it would be nice if similar to Architect, it told us uh, an estimate of whether we will be increasing or reducing the memory when we do that. But they're not currently there. However, the things that it does better far outweigh the things that it does worse, in my opinion. So my personal suggestion is certainly that if you have workspace available and you're not doing your development there yet, just give it a try. I think most people will prefer it to an architect. Admittedly, our uh, sort of baseline benchmark that we've got there in architect probably isn't that higher benchmark to beat.